is Matthew Pfeiffer with MattPfeifferCoaching.com. Thank you for checking out my YouTube channel. On my channel, I help people who are in toxic, narcissistic relationships, or maybe it's a toxic workplace, toxic church. Long story short, if you're dealing with difficult people, or if you're struggling, if you're struggling and recovering and healing from those type of situations, I help out in those type of situations. So make sure you like and you subscribe and hit the bell notification so you are notified each and every single time uh, I upload a new video. And if you have a question for me, make sure you send it into just ask Matt at mattpfeiffercoaching.com. Again, that is just ask Matt at mattpfeiffercoaching.com. And I will uh, get to your email. Just make sure that email is two to three paragraphs max, being very direct and specific to what your question actually is. If it's too long, it's too lengthy, or if I don't know what you're asking, unfortunately, I will not be able to get to it. And uh, if you want my help, the fastest way to get my help is to connect with me on my Toxic to Triumph community. That way you, you and I can talk and uh, have uh, talk through uh, my webinars. You can connect with myself and with other people and we have different conversations about a variety of different topics and you can ask me questions there, ask me questions on my podcast and you also get to connect with people in my network. You also get to connect with people in the forum and you also uh, get uh, to, uh, you get discounts also on my courses as well. So all of those will be linked down below. So let me get to this email and let's uh, let's see what's going on. So this email reads, uh, I'm, I'm, going, I'm going my first time to family court uh, with my ex. Uh, meeting the judge and everything has been, has given me a lot of anxiety. So that, so one of the things that we want to talk about in terms of anxiety is that everybody has it, right? And you should have a bit of anxiety going into court. Right? A lot of times people want to, they don't want to feel any anxiety whatsoever. And uh, that's just not realistic. We're supposed to feel anxiety. Right? So it's natural to be anxious. It's natural to feel this level of stress. In particular, we're going through a, through a divorce. There's a lot at stake. And so we want to set the proper expectation that we're going to have anxiety. Well, we're going to circle back to that here in a second. Um, this email continues. Uh, it is not is not his first time. Uh, he has been previously married and uh, and a three year old. Uh, we we have two little ones, seven and two years old. Uh, he's not he is not a responsible person. He's very good at talking, and of course, getting himself emotional. I'm going to circle back to that because that is very common with narcissists in court and that and a lot of times as the as the codependent we struggle watching this we know how manipulative this person is and we're very concerned and we think these type of tactics work and there's ways that we can make sure that they don't this email continues i would love to feel prepared emotionally for court uh, all i ask all i ask for is uh, child support to be taken through his check not sent to me and for us to be able to move out of state Right, and this email continues. He seemed agreeable to us moving even with the new address. And, in, uh, and then once he received the, the information, he told his lawyer he did not agree. That's very common. And for those of you who are going through this, right, it's very common. A lot of times they agree outside of it because they kind of want you to tip your hand and show your cards. And then once you do, all of a sudden, next thing you know, they don't agree. And all of these things are very common. We're gonna talk about what to do there. This email continues, uh, I spent almost 8,000 on my first lawyer to try to come up with the parental agreement uh, and he wouldn't agree or sign. Again, very common. A lot of times, you want you even if you come up with an agreement, even if both of you guys agree, they won't sign on it because they don't want to let go of their control. We're gonna talk about that here in a second as well. This email continues, uh, I want to feel prepared so I don't feel like everything is to the unknown. I know it may not seem like a, a complete question, but I've dealt with the narcissistic man for seven years, for seven years, and now have been separated for over a year. I met my partner. Things have been great and a healthy, and a great and healthy, and I want to continue for the best uh, for the boys. Any advice would greatly be appreciated. So good for you, right? That you've already started dating. You started moving on. You found, you know, you found someone that uh, you, you've connected with. So good for you. Right, that you're moving, you've made a decision. Right, I, you you may hear me say this quite often. I've said this on other platforms that we have to choose to live life first, and once we choose to live life, then the healing process begins. It's not a lot of times people think that we heal first, then we go live life. So we choose life 
first. Right, so let's get into this. So this anxiety that we're feeling, right? We have to understand what anxiety is for. Why do we have it? No one likes the way it feels. You're not supposed to like the way that it feels. So why do we feel it? What's it there for? And this is the reason why it's so important to process all of our emotions. Everyone, everyone wants to process the good ones, the ones that we like, the ones that feel good when we're happy, when we're excited. But no one wants to process the, the ones that, I don't even like terming them negative, but the ones that we don't like the way that they feel. Anxiety, anger, jealousy, all of those things. Right, what is this anxiety telling you? And you actually said it in the email. You may not have realized what you actually said. I want to feel prepared. Imagine, just think about how your anxiety would decrease, the stress would decrease if you felt prepared for court, if you knew what to expect or at least relatively what to expect, right? So some of the ways that we can prepare to, to alleviate some of your anxiety, right, is to be better prepared for court, the fact that we don't know what's happening, the fact that we don't know the, the, direct, the direction of the case, we need to do a few things. We need to be asking questions to our lawyer, right? It sounds like for you, this is just a crapshoot. We don't have enough ownership. We don't have enough say, right? We need to have enough, we need to have a voice. We need to have our voice heard, um, not only by our lawyer, but your lawyer needs to advocate really well for you, right, in court. And so if you're not advocating for these things that are happening, right, and, and, uh, and, to, and to be, uh, to kind of get to the second part of your email, right, that your, your ex, or soon to be ex, is very good at talking. You said he's very charismatic. He, he's able to make himself emotional. If we leave this up to emotions in court, one of the, some, a couple of things that you mentioned, his emotions, your anxiety, right, guess what? It's gonna be a crapshoot. The mistake that a lot of people make when they're going into court with a narcissist is that they try to make this an emotional battle. Who can, who can put on a scene? Who can get emotional? You will lose that battle almost every fucking time, right? We're not there. This isn't TV. This isn't Law & Order SVU. We go in there with evidence to support the narrative that you want. Some of the things that you said is that he's not responsible. Show why he's not responsible. Show evidence, right? We can't just say he's not responsible, right? If, if he did not take them to school on his weeks, get the documentation, go talk to the schools. If he has not been to the, to the doctors and the dentists and things like that, go get your evidence, right? Show them, right? This complete, I don't care. This person can cry all they want. They can get emotional. They can do this. They can do that. Your honor, look at the, look at, look at these 10 pieces of evidence, right? And obviously allow for your lawyer to advocate and, and submit the evidence uh, as, uh, as, as they see fit in the, in, in the proper way, right? Here's, here's something that a lot of people don't like to hear. You don't like to hear, but let me bring some clarity to it. So one of the things that happens is that quite often a narcissist, exactly what you said, will go in and they will, they will begin to become very emotional, start crying, start getting angry, right? They will start to play, they will start to put themselves as victims, right? And that's very common with narcissists, that once they feel like things are not going their way, they will turn their, themselves to a victim. Guess what? Courts don't like victims. They don't like victims. And so for people who have been, a, a, who, who have experienced domestic or, um, or uh, narcissistic abuse, quite often they hear that and they get very triggered. What do you mean court doesn't like, um, doesn't like victim, but I am a victim, right? Yes, but here's what court does. And here, let me tell you why court doesn't like victims before I continue. The reason why court does not like victims is because when people go to court, everybody's a victim. Every single person in court is a victim. The person who just created some sort of chaos at a mall, guess what, they're a victim. I did it in self-defense. The person who shot up some, you know, a, a venue, right? I, I did it in self-defense. I was afraid of my, afraid for my life. I was afraid of this, right? Every single person who goes into court, person who just murdered someone, they're all, they were doing it in self-defense. Everybody in court is the victim, right? So you want and you need to present yourself differently 
than what court normally sees. I'll tell you what court does like. I'll tell you what they do appreciate. They want a fucking adult. Right? It doesn't matter if you get, like, it doesn't matter about the emotion, right? If you can't keep it together and you start crying and things like that, right? We want to keep it as contained as we possibly can. But what court does want and what they do respect is that you advocate for what you want and need properly, like an adult, right? Your Honor, I need, you know, I need to move because it is in the best interest of the children because I have a better job, I have a better this, I have a better that. It is going to enhance their life in these these different ways, right? And obviously, you partner with your lawyer. We want, we need a plan in place. If this is just a crapshoot, you're going to lose. I don't even care if you paid eight thousand or eighty thousand on your lawyer. You need a plan constructed into place, right? If you were a football team, you would have a game plan to be able to uh, attack your opponent. If you're a basketball team, again, game plan, right? If you were an orchestra, you would practice your notes, your music on, on the things that you would be playing uh, at your recital, right? If we don't have a plan in place, get ready to get your shit kicked in. So you need to partner with your lawyer, and if your lawyer is not responding and things like that, because that's also very common, then we need to, at the very least, consult another lawyer. You've paid this person $8,000 for a reason. They have to do a job. They talk about the legalities of things. You, you talk about the things that you want. You provide them with evidence, right? And allow, it doesn't matter if you cry, if you can't keep it together, right? And I promise you, your anxiety, I'm not saying you won't have no anxiety. Your anxiety will go down as you're more prepared for your court dates, right? But right now, it's a crapshoot. The other thing that I would tell you in terms of your anxiety don't give a shit what the narcissist says. You have to remember, the narcissist is trying to win. You should only pay attention to what your lawyer and what the judge is saying, saying to you. you the narcissist is never gonna tell you what they wanna hear. They're always gonna say, I agree, but don't agree, this and that. But I don't feel that you are done until you are actually done. And so uh, what I compare that to, right? when you're looking at the narcissist, and the narcissist is very, can, can be, very unpredictable. You're not sure what they, you know, uh, what if they're going to agree. If you're looking at them, you're giving over your power to somebody that is too flaky, right? So you want to pay to closer attention to the lawyer, to the judge. It's like being on an airplane. When there's a lot of turbulence and you feel uncomfortable on the plane, guess what? It, sometimes the passengers might might, you know, they might scream, they might get upset, and things like that. If you look over at the stewardess, if they're calm, if the pilot's calm, then guess what? There's nothing to worry about. They know because they would know best if you guys are really actually in trouble, because they have the experience. If the judge is saying you're in trouble, if the if your lawyer is saying you're in trouble, you know, or things aren't going your way, then you should worry. But until then, proceed with evidence the proper way. This is not you versus the, take it away from word versus word, take it away from emotion versus emotion and provide evidence. So thank you guys very much for hopping in. Thank you guys for being a part, listening to, um, the, to this. Make sure, don't forget, make sure you subscribe, make sure you hit the bell notification so you're notified each and every time I upload a new video. Once again, my name is Matthew Pfeiffer with mattpfeiffercoaching.com. If you want to send me an email, send it to justaskmatt at mattpfeiffercoaching.com. Again, that is justaskmatt at mattpfeiffercoaching.com. Make sure you keep that email two to three paragraphs max, being very, two to three paragraphs max, being very direct and to the point of what your question actually is. Uh, the fastest way to get my help is to connect with me on my Toxic to Triumph community. All of that will be linked down below. You'll also see courses. You'll also see uh, my. Um, you'll also see all of my social media platforms, and I do a lot of different things on a lot of different platforms. At this point, I'm basically a full-time content creator. Thank you guys very much. I will see you in the next video.